Today, you guys, today we're gonna to be covering some Olympic lifting. Just some basics with Olympic lifting. First, we're gonna kind of go around just to guess how many different Olympic lifts do you guys think there are? Maddie, how many do you think there are? Four. Okay, four. Kai? Six. Six. Ryan? Well, depends on how you do it, but I just go off the two. Okay. Ones. <laughs> yeah, I probably say around five. Five? Let's say four. Four? Corey, will you tell everyone how many <laughs> Olympic lifts there are? Two is the correct answer. So in Olympic lifting, there's a lot of different uh, modifications, variables you make. But there's only two Olympic lifts. The first being, Brian, can you tell me what it is? Clean and jerk. The clean and jerk being movement one. Movement two being Ryan. Snatch. Go, right? The snatch. That is correct. So think of this as an Olympic lifting competition or basic Olympic lifting to the Olympics. You have the clean and jerk all processed in one movement, which is one lift. And then the snatch is your second lift. So in Olympic lifting, there's only two Olympic lifts, but there's a bunch of different variables, modifications, different variations you can do of the Olympic lifts. Does that make sense? Everyone know how the clean and jerk looks versus the snatch? Yep. So a lot of times when it comes to Olympic lifting, when we're doing them for uh, athletic purpose, what is it for? So why do we do Olympic lifts? Power. It's about yep, generate power or power production. Let's just say it's our power production movements. That would be why we do Olympic lifting. Uh, unless it was with an athlete who their sport is Olympic weightlifting. Obviously, we want the max amount of weight pulled in a technique basis. So a lot of times in the terminology, the Olympic lifts are written in three ways. We always start with their start position. So we can even race these now going through. So I'm writing Olympic lift for if I'm programming standpoints or telling an athlete, you write it in three different ways. So you start with their, their start position is the first piece you write up. The second piece of what you would write would be their how or their catch position. And the third piece would be the type of lift. So this really only refers to basically the clean and uh, the clean and snatch. The jerk's slightly different when we break those two apart. So how would I write up uh, this? Does anyone know what the start position looks like? How many different variations there are? Um, usually, you mean you're usually I was starting on the floor. Yep, so floor I, I from a or a hang. Hang. Yep, exactly. So here you would see floor, which typically you, if you were starting from the floor there would be nothing written. So if my clean or my jerk or my clean or my snatch is starting from the floor, you won't write floor with the clean version. You would just leave it blank. So floor is the equivalency of leaving this part blank. Or you could write hang. There's also a few different variations. You can have a high hang, which means they would not go down to the knee. Hang means in starting they would load all the way to the knee. There's also a low hang where you go past the knee but not to the floor, still starting at the hips. Does that all make sense? Can you just repeat that last part one more time you said? A low hang. So think of this in proportion to where I start my hang positions here and I a full hang or just the normal hang is down to the knee. Okay. High hang would be like a mid hip and a low hang would be going past the knee but you're not going to the floor. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Now my catch position. Here you'll see a lot of times the words power. What does a power clean look like? If I wrote, we were writing, like, what does power refer to? Uh, the main term for most people is just catching it as high as possible. But. That is correct, yep, from Ryan. Uh, power means we're trying to catch it as high as possible. So here, a lot of time in our catch position, uh, if we're writing hang, power, clean, which is typically what you see with a lot of athletes, we're trying to pull that clean from the hang position and pull it as high as we can, catch as high as we can. Cool. You'll see right here, you can see a squat. <coughs> Also, thinking you're then now squatting all the way down into your clean. Another term for it. Uh, if there is no preference on, if there's no middle word, you could do either or, if that makes sense. Now, the last piece would be you would have right here clean or snatch. The only one which is a little different would be the jerk. Uh, your start position is always the same, loaded on the shoulders. Uh, you then have two different catch positions. Your power catch position, well really three different catch positions kind of. So you have a split when it comes to just jerk process. So the start is always the same. You could catch in a split, a power, and technically from that power position where the feet are equal, you can still catch power into a full squat, but slightly different. Yeah. Not very many people have the technique to do such. 
responsibility. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Big restraint right that's, there. That's, I'm back here. So hard. <laughs> but that would be how we would write it. So if I were technically to coach or program a hang clean for an athlete, the real term would be hang power clean. My goal is starting from the hang position, catching in the most powerful position possible. But a lot of times for sake of uh, rhythm or purpose of how much room on the whiteboard we have, you'll see only written the word hang clean and we'll coach them on where we want them to catch it. Who's ever heard a clean from the floor called a power clean before? A lot of times, right? Technically not incorrect, but the correct standpoint, if they were your coach was telling you to power clean, you'd start from the floor, but where would you catch it? As high as possible. A lot of times when uh, some incorrect coaches, when you see a power clean, what do they typically want you to do? Catch it as low as possible. So you'll see that return like referred to incorrectly a lot. So just making sure you guys know this, what power depends is always on the catch position. Doesn't matter about where you start. So if someone's doing a, fl a clean from the floor, it doesn't necessarily make it a power clean unless they're catching in that power position. <clears throat> Question? You kind of base it off like what muscle groups you want to work because more of like a the squat feel like 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 involving legs as well compared to like the powers you're catching it like up high so you're not using your legs as much uh you use your legs just think of the the more like the higher you have to catch the barbell yeah. the more power production you need for that movement so they're using their legs but in a different manner you could make a squat into more of a strength based movement rather than powers not quite on muscle groups but let's think on programming of where i want to be throughout the cycle do i want to be more in a strength based movement or a power based movement just because being catching up higher is going to require more speed, uh, technically move much faster. Um, and then the squat not only is going to require a little bit more strength face movements to come in and out of the hole, but also a little bit more technique there too. So knowing which one is a little bit more bang for your buck from a teaching standpoint as well. Cool. Does anyone get this and kind of like how they look? Smooth. Now we'll kind of go into some different variations of each and what you'll see in here. So who has something that we've worked with every Monday with the prep athletes? What's something we do with them? Hang clean. Hang clean. Super easy. So like I said, technically we do a hang power clean. Our goal from the hang cleans with our prep athletes is for them to create power and more power production when it comes from there. So when it comes to the hang power clean, we're starting from the hang position. So already upright, we're loading and catching in our power position and we're performing the clean movement. So it's really in simple to write and go through just making sure you know what you're looking at from here. Now there's a ton of different variations like we can talk about just the clean. So right here we can even hang squat clean. Just so you guys are aware, what would hang squat clean look like? Where do we start first? Tell me where we start. The hang from the hip and we go down to just about the knee and then we are catching in a full squat. Yep, and it's still performing that clean motion. Super simple. There's the high hang which just means the quick hips so are really the Bar does not leave that start process before the pull happens. Same concept uh, going throughout. You guys see how you can get a bunch of different variations of just the two Olympic lifts, but why everyone thought like five, six, maybe even seven or eight, just because each one you can really break up into loads and loads of different movements, but there being really only two true uh, Olympic lifts when it comes down to Olympic lifting. So anyone have any questions on what we've covered thus far before we kind of move on? No, everyone's smooth with that so far. Kai, you look like you kind of have No, questions. I have questions. I just can't, like, formulate. <laughs> All right, as I erase, I'll let you think, and then I'll come back to you, okay? <laughs> okay, Kai, I'm back. Um, so I, I guess I'm, like, I'm just trying to, because now I'm kind of thinking about what Nick had said. I, I didn't really get what he said. He was talking about, um, like, the different positioning mm -hmm. like, when you're um, pulling for, like, you were saying, for power versus strength. Yep. Um, so just like on that example, like with the power and the squat, what is the like, I guess the difference in what you're looking for when like doing those movements with athletes? If I were to choose either like what yeah. I would look for. Um, so if I'm going to program an athlete to do a squat clean, um, it comes down to a very specific to what type of athlete that is. Um, most of the time I won't program for a normal athlete whose goal is to produce power at the fastest rate possible. I'm not going to program a squat clean, but some athletes they have to undergo a longer based process e of power. So think more sustained, but still a higher amount of power production we might. So think of that of an athlete similar to, not quite shot put, um, what's the one where they spin? Can't think of the name. Discus. Yeah, hammer. <clears throat> hammer throw is actually what I was thinking, but thank you, discus, similar. Uh, a similar aspect when they're producing power, but it's an elongated range that they have to produce this for. So you might see in a lot of 
throwers. Same with discus too, and even sometimes shot put, just because it is a little bit longer of a base heat, slightly, but still the hang power clean would be important too, so I'd program both. A lot of times for me, from a personal preference, uh, I'm gonna get more bang for my buck by doing some type of power production to the utmost power position, and then later on throughout programming block, programming them some strength specific movements. So I'll have block, just for example, like you see with our prep kids, we have some hang power work going through, or hang power cleans, and then we have next up paired with it would be, their next block would be squats. A big compound strength movement, that way we get a little bit more bang for their buck, because they're gonna get more strength production out of the back squat than they would out of a hang squat clean. So, but if my athlete was an Olympic lifter, for example, I would not only program both into it, one, the squat clean, because that's what they're, ideally they'll pull the most amount of weight if they can sink the lowest underneath it, because the lower you pull, or the lower you can dip, the more weight you can pull, because you don't have to pull it as high. Yeah. But that would take a little bit more technique basey, as well as, one, we want them to still be powerful, so I would program hang power, but that would be a little bit less specific to what they see. So does, it, does any of that also have to do with, I guess, like range of motion and like where you're catching it as well? I done. So a range of motion, like uh, flexibility and mobility patterns plays a huge role into where you can catch it. Okay. Uh, especially for, let's think of uh, a snatch. The movement is overhead. Um, a lot of people lose overhead mobility the deeper they go into a squat just because their torso is going to start to dip. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be huge. If I, my athlete doesn't have a great overhead range of motion, I definitely can't program a hang squat snatch, even if I'm looking for some type of overhead, like overhead movement, I have to stick to just power because of the demands of my athlete and what they can get. <coughs> so you would look at that as well. Okay, thank you. Awesome, of course. Any other questions, but you kind of look like you had um, one. Yeah, I was just wondering, um, for like a, uh, one of those snatch cleans, mm -hmm. um, what would be like a, like movement, like a movement integration going to it if somebody has like never done a snatch? That is perfect, exactly what we're gonna get into. So now we're gonna get into three things that we kind of build up into it. So bro, you're kind of leading us into our next piece of the education. So we call these, I like to break them into your three basics. So typically what we'll always start is let an athlete practice with a PVC pipe, practice the exact movement you want to practice, but we always break both. Let's think of the clean and the snatch. You kind of see them broken into three different pieces, just depending on grip. So two and three. Now who here can guess the first piece? If oh, I'm on the barbell now, no longer on a PVC pipe, what am I going to have my athlete do? We know they can hit hinge. So you already know your athlete is confident enough to load their hips backward, keep their chest up. Everything is safe in that manner, but they've just never hang clean before. Can anyone guess the barbell movement we're gonna start them with? And we know they can barbell already out, we know they can hip hinge, everything like that. Yeah, a, a jump shrug, that is exactly correct, yes. So we'll start the barbell jump shrug. Now if I wanted this for a clean, I would just say barbell jump shrug. If I wanted it to prep for a snatch, I would say snatch grip barbell jump shrug. That way they're wider basing on it. I'm just for a sake of me writing on the whiteboard, I'm just gonna write the clean portions. But just so you guys know, you can easily make this into a snatch grip variation to prep for the snatch. Mm -hmm. What I'm looking on the barbell jump shrug is an efficient load of the hips from that hang position and an efficient triple extension, meaning they're extending all the way through the toe or through the ankles, knees, and hips, popping up. They can jump off the floor, obviously, ideally it's written in the word, that way they're actually getting some power, but as long as they're getting a triple extension, typically that movement was coached correctly. Because all you're trying to teach right here, the first portion of the clean, think of it if we break the clean in the portions. First, you have to load, and the first movement after you've loaded is hip extension. So that's all we're kind of coaching and pulling right here. Does that make sense? Now, the second movement, can anyone guess that one? We'll do a big line right here. High pull. High pull, exactly. Now, the high pull coaches what portion of the clean? Can anyone guess? It's in the word high pull. The pull, yes, the, the, the arm, the pull. the pull. Exactly, so if we already coach the extension of the hips, with the jump shrug, then we're gonna transition it because a high pull not only involves extension of the hips, but it also pull, or involves the aggressive pull of that barbell up to your chin of the hang clean. Or same with the snatch from a wider grip. Now the last piece we would do, can anyone guess? The full movement. The full movement, yep, that's a really good guess because there was nothing left. <laughs> so right here, I would first, so I like to start it off, if I have a brand new athlete that I know is confident enough and competent enough to RDL, hip hinge, hold the barbell in their hands and they're all safe, I would first start them with a barbell jump shrug, week one. Make sure they move through this movement, they're confident with it, they've built some really good competency with it. Then high pulls, making sure they not only can create hip extension, but pull the bar close and high up to their body. And then three, we teach the catch portion, full movement or their catch of that clean motion. Does that all make sense? So this is what you'd stick to whenever I'm trying to teach the clean uh, or snatch. This is your three-step process. Start with hip extension, 
Second piece of your middle piece is start with, or hit the pull. Third, catch. Um, and then also when you, because uh, I've seen you and Zudu for the, like, the barbell complex. complex yeah. So that's also what you guys do. Exactly. As far as a warm-up goes. Yep, so whenever I do any type of Olympic lift, I like any athlete from a preference standpoint to do a barbell complex. Um, and we're building uh, context to the lifts they're going to be doing that day. So that barbell complex is an easy warm-up to build context. So, for example, you usually see it start with an RDL. Why? So what's the first portion? Uh, we're, we're loading the hips, hip hinge. So we typically start all of our barbell complex with some type of RDL motion just so they load their hips. Second piece would be the lower end pull. So a lot of times you'll see a bent over row or some type of high pull action just so because you do have a pull action coming kind of from the bottom a little bit slightly. Um, third piece, you typically see some type of higher end pull, hip extension, or the full movement. And a lot of times you'll see as that last one will either be the full movement you want done, maybe some type of front squat or overhead squat to build a little bit more confidence with that movement or some pairing with it that they'll experience during that session. So typically throughout a barbell complex, if I'm going to have it, it's going to be fully contexted to the movement they're doing that day. So I wouldn't do a snatch grip, yeah. uh, high pull, snatch grip pulls if they were going to be cleaning that day, same thing, vice versa. Does that all make sense? Cool. So how does everyone feel with all this and then teaching it? So they knowing the process of how to get an athlete into a hang clean, how to get an athlete into a uh, hangs snatch everyone feel good with that it's not very super complicated from a standpoint of writing and programming it um typically seeing that when you program it we're going to stay around those power ranges just like we talked about you're going to say lower rep ranges uh move the weight fast um but the hardest part is coaching it uh coaching it well and then performing it well so what we're all going to dive out right now is that we're going to go try out how to clean so we're going to all clean today we're going to do two different cleans we're going to clean from the floor both we're gonna catch in the power position though. So we're gonna start in the floor for one of them. We're just gonna do a power clean from the floor. Then second one, we're gonna do a hang power clean. So starting from the hang position, catching in that power base. Smooth. So we're gonna practice that. We're gonna practice all three portions uh, for both movements kind of going throughout. Um, and then your guys' homework this week, you're gonna do the exact same thing, um, but you're gonna be from the snatch base. So you're gonna snatch from the floor and then you'll do a hang snatch as well. All right, I'll let you guys pick um, where you want your catch position to. So you'll just have to be ready to have that justified. If you want to catch in a full squat or if you want to catch in that power position. From a snatch standpoint, I would recommend catching in the power position. Are you talking about the why are you just showing a movement? Are you just showing? Doing I want movement? you just to film you guys doing both movements okay. uh, and then you're going to coach yourself uh, through it as we go throughout, okay? So no need to voiceover. Okay. So everyone got it? Cool. Let's go jump out there to the turf.